welcome to Kicking It With Sensei. And today we're joined by Sensei Ando. And I started this podcast a year ago and Ando was actually my first guest on it. And it's hard to believe it's been a year since that. I remember I was very nervous at the time and 80 interviews later and here we are back with Sensei Ando. It's wow, how many how many interviews did you just say? How many? 80. 80 interviews. Yeah. Congratulations. That's so incredible. What dedication. That's amazing. That's you know, hard to believe now. It's I've had everybody from Benny the Jet to Master Wong to yourself. It's it's been an interesting year. Beautiful. So you went right uphill. You started down here with me and then you went right uphill to the stars. Oh, everyone's level. <laughs> well, we all have our own stories. So <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so your story. So if you have 80 interviews, can you tell me, can I interview, uh, interview you for a second? After 80 interviews with uh, martial arts of all ages and styles, yeah. what have you learned about martial arts or martial artists, the community at large? What have you learned? Or I think I've discovered a lot of martial arts that I've never heard of before. I think mm. one that I've talked about interest in is uh, Luya from Hawaii. Mm. And uh, it's very interesting. I've spoke to Michelle Manhu a few times now on the mm -hmm. channel. Sure. It's very interesting. It's still very secretive. So it's it's very difficult to get a lot of information on it. But but that's just one. I've also learned a lot about Viking martial arts, which I never knew existed. And cool. uh, the one thing I have learned is the similarities between nearly everything. Everything is very similar. Mm. And... Uh, I suppose we only have you mean the, you mean the styles are similar or you mean martial artists are similar uh the styles now if you look at lua for instance in hawaii and then look at the japanese arts like both of them have the well the, you would have kata in the japanese arts they have the hula and the hawaiian arts there's the structure of martial arts is very similar across the world and it's, it's very interesting though that that's something that's there a thousand years that mm. they had their sort of a way of we always said kata was a way of hiding the arts when they were banned but it's funny to see that the same thing happened in hawaii and mm. the same thing happened in scandinavia and but uh it's, it's been an interesting journey <laughs> i definitely that's a great lesson i definitely believe we have as martial artists we have more in common than what makes us different. So if we focus on the things that we have in common, then we can enjoy the things that make us different. If we focus yeah. on the things that make us different, then it ruins everything. So that's yeah. a great lesson to have learned. Thank you. Oh, it's, it's awesome. it, are you going to make trips now? Or does that mean you have to go to Scandinavia and Hawaii to start studying these things? Or uh, are you just going deeper into what you already do? Uh, I do hope to make trips at some stage. It's... Uh... Now, I recently tried something new on my channel. It's the white belt mindset. And I've actually went into a few different systems and just done a one-to-one -one session with an instructor and then had a sparring <laughs> match at the end. And uh, <laughs> it was it was quite fun. I got my got my ass kicked twice or three times. So <laughs> but good. It was fun. But uh, good. Well, it's very I've tried, I've, I've tried jujitsu and I've tried kickboxing and I've actually tried Muay Thai as well. But awesome. it, it, it was very interesting. But awesome. now, on that note, I believe that you've done a bit of cross training this year as well yourself, and you've dabbled in ballet. Was it? I even yeah, I started the year uh, last year off with some. This year, what year is this? After COVID, I'm so confused. <laughs> yeah, uh, I started this year off with uh, some ballet lessons. We were still on lockdown, and I uh, found a really great teacher, and um, I've had some foot arthritis issues so I've kind of stopped for the moment with the ballet but uh even for the couple of months that I was doing it uh again it's just how many ways can you move your body how many different ways can you become aware of how you're connecting and aligning um it all feeds each other right I I, I believe and even ballet I mean it's very difficult if you doing anything well is difficult and ballet is such a discipline that uh I think most, a lot of martial artists I know would fall out. There's no way they'd even get through one class. It's just very fine motor control and these very small, precise movements. And if you look at your leg like, why are you doing this? What? Come on, turn, rotate, lift. And your leg just sits there like a lump of meat. And you maybe you can kick people in the head and you have great footwork. 
but it's a different thing. And so that's really challenging. So I encourage everyone to try things they believe are stupid or looks weird. Yeah, but go try it a little bit and see what your body does. Um, because ultimately you're just learning about yourself. And even if you, you figure out, I don't want to do that, that only gives you double confidence in what you do want to do. So try everything. Don't be afraid of trying things. You don't have to stay there and cross train forever, but at least cross try. If yeah. not cross train, cross try. Definitely. And dancing is a great way of doing it. Some of the greats have been heavily involved in dancing. I know John Claude Van Damme done ballet, and That's Bruce true. Lee was a cha cha champion in Hong Kong, I believe. That's so right. I know Ramsey Dewey is also, I think he's got a degree in modern dance. So, yeah. But uh, what other activities do you think outside of martial arts would help in a martial arts setting? Everything, honest to goodness. I mean, I think even Mustashi said, you know, if you're a master of one art, you understand the mastery of all arts. Yeah. So I don't care if you want to go take a, a butchery course and learn how to handle a knife and cut meat. That will teach you things. That will teach yeah. you things that you could absolutely apply into martial arts. Um, I, I can't think of an activity. Well, I probably could. But <laughs> any activity actually can help develop some skill. I think sometimes in martial arts, people get caught up just in the big, easy features. Like, oh, you got to be strong. You got to be flexible. You got to be fast. You got to be tough. Maybe those are the big four. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so many other qualities, especially as you get older and you're not fast and strong and flexible and tough, uh, where you need to really enhance your focus, your intention, your timing. Um, your choices, trusting your instinct. There's a whole other list of qualities that you need to excel. And even if it's just doing needlepoint, uh, if that teaches you to slow down, take a breath, focus on something and really pay attention, I think that will help in your martial arts class. So doing anything well will help everything else, I think. Excellent. Now, we've both set goals this year, yourself for the Valley and myself for this YouTube, but have you any big goals that you have at the moment that you'd like to achieve? Yeah, well, absolutely. Uh, COVID shut down uh, my business in Los Angeles and, uh, you know, wiped me out. So got to restart. So the big goal one is to <laughs> restart, uh, build up a new group, build up a new school, uh, be able to feed myself, uh, pay my rent um, on a different coast. My wife and I moved to the other coast of the United States, new city. Uh, closer to some family and uh yeah so the new goal is to survive <laughs> in a new city that's number one and then of course uh under that goal of survival is to develop as a martial artist i've already fallen in with some great teachers and great students so uh just got to keep moving forward especially now after the lockdown i think we can all appreciate training with people um and so to not waste those opportunities if you get a partner who wants to meet before class or after class, do it. Every moment you can get uh, interacting with other martial artists to develop yourself, take those opportunities while we can, because who knows if another lockdown is coming or you have an injury or something happens, uh, don't take your class time and class partners for granted. Make the most of them. Definitely. So, and I can't agree with you more there. I know where I live here, we're just on the border between the North and the Republic of Ireland. So in the Northern part, the restrictions lifted a lot earlier, and we're still restricted here. Mm -hmm. so I've been able to drive across the border and train there. Oh. I've been going up and training in systems that I've never done before, and regularly getting beat up, all for the all for the good cause. But <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's that's great. So in that way, it's a blessing, right? You forces you out of your comfort zone, forces you out of your routine. And now you got to figure out a whole new set of uh, set of skills. So good for you, good for you for going over the border and doing what you got to do. That's legal, right? You're allowed to go over the border. And yeah, come we're, back, we're allowed. That... Yeah, we're allowed. I'm actually from the north of, and I've moved down to the southern end, so it's it's quite free flowing. Great. But, uh, okay. but cool. over the last eighteen months or so with COVID, a lot of things have moved online. Do you think that's been a good thing for martial arts? Um. Well, like everything, there's pros and cons, right? Mm -hmm. The benefit is more and more people, I think, did have a chance to look outside of what they normally do because you got woken up out of your routine, can't go to class, can't see the normal people. So if you're still interested in martial arts, go online. That's 
about it. And so maybe you did run into a style that you never heard of before, and now you have new information. Maybe you did have access to a teacher who before COVID did not have an online presence, but then found they needed to create an online school, then decided to open up that online school to the public. So now maybe uh, more teachers have come out so that we all have access to other great teachers that we didn't have before. So absolutely, that's a benefit. So yes, martial arts better now because I think there's more open doors and open windows to see what the rest of the world is doing. On the con, the negative side, um, it would be easy to get caught up in just chasing down videos and Zoom classes and thinking you're doing enough. And of course, that's not it. That's only part of it. You've got to get out there and find people, interact. Uh, that's the second half of your training. There's things you can do for yourself, and then you got to go out and test it and with other people to see how it holds up. So uh, I just hope people, again, make the most of both. We're living in the greatest information age in human history. So read, look, watch videos, email people, get information, build bridges. Don't be a, don't be a snob. Uh, don't be a hermit. Get out there. And then get out there. Get out there. Get out of your house. Turn off the device. Touch somebody. Let them touch you and, uh, and, and test out what you've been learning. Because if you don't, well, you're just half a martial artist. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I know cross training has been a big thing in recent times. Now, do you think it's important to cross train in different martial arts and outside of martial arts as well? Um, I, <clears throat> it all depends on how you're training in your main art. It's possible that you belong to a group that is already multi dimensional. You guys roll on the ground, you do striking, uh, you work with weapons or whatever your goals are. And it's a really well rounded class, it's a big enough club that you've got big people, small people, slow people, fast people. So you have so many challenges and so much information that there isn't much need to go outside. But of course, the only way you know that is if you go outside to compare what you're doing to what everyone else is doing. You may think, oh, I love my school. You know, oh, it's very challenging. We have all these forms I learned. We do sparring. Yeah, I got it. But then you go out to a tournament a, a, from a different style or you go visit another school or you work out with someone from a different school and you say, whoa, what's that? I've never heard of that. I like that. Um, or, wow, how'd you get me with that move? I've never seen such a thing. Then that's a good clue. You might want to go take a seminar somewhere or go look online a little bit or maybe on every other week you go do a class over there because maybe you were wrong thinking that you had everything you wanted or needed. Um, but so just to play devil's advocate, I suppose it is possible that you just landed luckily in the laps of a teacher and a club where everything's covered. You're getting everything you ever wanted. You're consistently challenged for years, and there's no need to go outside. But again, you're only going to know that if you go outside to double check. So yeah. always go outside to double check. Yeah, definitely. It's, I know my own system. I thought it was quite well-rounded. And I went to a local jiu-jitsu club mm. and got a big shock when a white belt was just playing with me. I might as well have been one of those grappling dummies. I was <laughs> just... It's hired me up in knots in every direction, but it's opened my eyes to see that in that specific area now there was better out there, and I can. But uh, yeah, so so you actually uh, you thought that you were well rounded enough that grappling was included in what you were already doing, and this guy was just better at grappling, or you thought you would never be on the ground and you didn't have to learn that. Oh well, we did have a good bit of grappling work, like so it was a lot of groundwork we did do. But it was just when I went on this, an art that was specifically groundwork, it was at a different level to what we would have sure. done. So it was sure. what I thought I was good at. And this other club, I was... It's a great, near. That's a great point. Yeah, I mean, back in the day before um, UFC, MMA, um, you know, I think every Taekwondo club I was in or the karate guys that I worked out with, we would do ground techniques. <laughs> you say, well, if a guy's sitting on top of you uh, doing this, you can do that. You'd run it a couple of times. You'd move on with the class. So in your mind, in your notebook, it seems like, yeah, 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 I got this. But then one wrestler comes in or one football player comes in or just one guy who's just heavy on top of you. And you go, wow, I really do need to practice these things under pressure over and over again, just like I do everything else. You can't just say, yes, stand-up takes a lot of work. Ground stuff, not so much. No, I think it's good to have respect. If you want to be good at anything, you're going to have to put in some time. If that means going to a, 
a BJJ club or a, a, a wrestling club, do it. And you don't have to go forever. Again, that's the thing. But go in so you have your experience where you go, whoa, this is more than I thought. Let me stick around until I can at least feel comfortable. And if that's six months, if that's a year, if that's five years, when I started BJJ, it was only supposed to be like a six month thing. I was like, I'm just going to take this a little bit so I feel comfortable on my back. And then I never quite felt, because there's always someone who makes you feel uncomfortable. And so then you end up just never leaving. You're like, okay, <laughs> okay, I need more. I need more. So it's tricky, but do it. Even a little is better than nothing. So Definitely. get out there. And do you think as martial artists, it's important to kind of take responsibility for your own journey and not have complete faith in your own school syllabus and just kind of say, it's, this is what I'm good at and kind of work on that and find your own weaknesses and improve on them? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm all about self-reliance. Self-defense, it's right there. Self-defense. You have to learn to defend yourself. And that means you need to be on every level engaged in your learning process. You know how you learn. If you're honest with yourself, you know what you're good at. You know what you're not so good at. You know which exercises you like to do a lot because you feel like you're good at them and which ones you avoid or are afraid of because you know you're not. Um, and if you don't go after those things that you're not good at, you'll always have vulnerabilities. It's not to say that you're not going to have skills and you can't handle yourselves in some situations, but you'll always be vulnerable and probably worried about the other types of situations. So there's no magic bullet. Nobody's 100%, uh, you know, can't be hurt. So start with your training. I don't care even if you just forget about ground stuff again and forget about weapons for a second. Forget about that. Even if you're just sparring and you're in a style that loves to spar, just punch kicks and that kind of thing, you know, you should know when you're off guard, when you got slipped up, what, when your hands have been dropping, when you're just out of position, when you're working too hard, when you're breathing harder than you should be, you must pay attention to those things. The martial arts is the greatest activity because it gives you the feedback in ways that you may not like, but it's very, very honest. If you get punched in the mouth, something was wrong with what you did. If you fall down, something is wrong with what you did. And if you just laugh it off or pretend it didn't really happen or say, well, I wasn't trying that hard um, or he's being too rough, those are all signs that you're not actually in this to learn anything. You're just trying to repeat victories in your head. Oh, I, but I am good. I am a black belt. No, you're not. You're acting like a black belt. You're pretending to be a black belt. What you need to do is say, wow, even that white belt just punched me in the mouth. Why? How? How do I stop that from happening again? And then now you're a student. Now you're a martial artist. And you may not be able to have those answers yourself. So even if you're taking responsibility for your own training, you may not really know what to do. Or you may not really know what your weakness is. You may think you're awesome. And hopefully you have a teacher and that's what they should be doing. If you're doing your kata and a teacher comes around and says, hey, well, you know, watch that front knee. You should be da-da-da. That can't be just like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, thanks. That should be okay. Let me write that down. I'm going to spend the next month on that thing. He just He took his time to come over and tell me that. I'm going to nail that down. And then once that's over... What's the next thing I have to work on? Yeah. Maybe you find it like, oh, my back hurts when I do that move. All right, figure out why. Or go ask a senior student, go ask a teacher. Hey, could you watch me do this and see what you, what, what, how can I make this better? That question leads to all goodness. How can I make this better? Even if you think you're great. Yeah, but how can I make this better? And I guarantee every teacher would love to hear uh, a student ask that question. Like, you actually have a question? You want me to help you? <laughs> Because most people just come to class, go home. Go to come to class, go home. Um, but when, when you're sitting there working on a bag or you're working on your kata, you say, you know, excuse me, but I don't get the, this doesn't feel right. Can you just watch this? It just doesn't feel right. That teacher, I promise you, will give you like a free private lesson right there. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get 20 minutes. Here's why. And try this. And how about that? And here's another exercise. So, uh, yes, take responsibility for your own learning. Um, take advantage of the fact that you have a teacher if you have one. And for God's sake, be honest. Yeah. Be honest with yourself. If you're getting tagged or you're afraid of things, look at those things. Look at them and go after it. Make those better. Yeah, so do. You think it's important to push yourself out of your comfort zone, really, and sort of stay uncomfortable throughout? Yeah. Yeah, always. Well, you know, even that, because I've said that kind of thing a lot about you know, out of your comfort zone or be uncomfortable. But at some point, I think there's no discomfort to being uncomfortable. Because you recognize it's the being in the uncomfortable part that, that's fun. 
that's where you learn. That's the challenging part. So um, if you lose, if you do get hit, there shouldn't, it, ideally, there shouldn't be even a flash of, oh, that jerk, or, oh, I'm a loser, or, oh, that sucks. It should instantly be, bam, oh, awesome. It's comfortable for me to make a mistake because I know now I got an idea for something to work on. And that's why I'm here. That's why I showed up to class. I need to know what to work on. So there's no losing if you're learning, right? That's a cliche, but it's true. And if uh, so nowadays, I'm getting out of this idea that you should be out of your comfort zone because losing should be your comfort zone. I'm comfortable being the worst one in class. I'm comfortable tying on the white belt because I have the most to learn and I'm happy being in that zone. What might be uncomfortable is if you think, I got this. I hope nobody finds out that I don't. Gee, I hope nobody challenges my, my confidence today. Gee, my identity means that I'm the best in the room. And if I slip and fall and get hit, my identity might come crashing down. I'm going to have a really bad day. I'm not going to come back. I don't want to be that uncomfortable. Yeah. So be comfortable with discomfort. You got it made. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think I've got that comfortable at times that other people have thought of crazy doing some of the stuff, but I think the, the they're most... just, they just don't get it. You're yeah. right. They're wrong. Um, and by the way, I should be fair. We're all developing as human beings at different speeds and from different starting points. Mm -hmm. So someone might be at a point in their martial arts career where they feel that it's time to look outside or try something new. Um, whereas someone else might really need to build up their confidence and nurture some skill building in one thing, one very narrow band of skills. So they get that kind of momentum in their character to learn how to learn, learn how to teach themselves and then build up that confidence to then go step on tying a white belt again, get pushed around a bit. So I don't mean to uh, call everybody out at the same time, like everybody quick, go outside and try something new. No. <laughs> For some people, stay right where you are, focus on what you're doing, be the best you can be at that. And when the time is right, if you're honest with yourself, you'll know, let me go challenge this. Let me test this. Let me see if there's another way to do this. And then you're now doing what I'm talking about. That's it. I think my craziest moment recently now was actually kickboxing. And I hadn't trained in 14 months since I'd done any mm -hmm. in-person training. And trying to explain to my wife that my first sparring match was going to be with a four-time world champion kickboxer at super heavyweight <laughs> and that's a lot heavier than I am and <laughs> but uh trying to explain to her about comfort zones just wasn't cutting it she was but uh yeah. uh, it was a very interesting sparring match but <laughs> you're still able to form full sentences so you must have done okay <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's that's it. Keep the guard up, just <laughs> and pray. Play pinball. Oh. <laughs> That's it. No, good and, for you. And you've had a long martial arts career, but what do you think has been your biggest challenge throughout your martial arts journey? Hmm. Biggest challenge. That's a good one. Um, never had a problem training. I love training. At this point, it's going to be injuries and just recovery time as you get older. I wish I had trained more when I was younger, so I had more to fall back on now, uh, instead of now seeing the importance of really grinding and sticking to something. Um, because now every injury or even just a normal workout, when you go hard, if I, tomorrow's like I usually roll on Sundays, Monday's rough. <laughs> Getting out of bed, Monday's rough. Not because I'm out of shape, not because I don't condition for it, but just because if you've got arthritis and herniated discs, you're inflamed. There's just no way around that, no healthy way out of medicines and things like that that you, you don't want to get into. But um, so that pulls you into a different type of training routine. So that's the most challenging part. It's not that you get stopped training, but as you get older, you have to be more clever about finding other ways to train. It's not that I don't work out on Monday. Uh, I just have to work on different exercises and things that I didn't used to do so that I can still stay on track and develop based on what I've been doing. Whereas when I was 20 or 30, you can work out every day, oh, get some sleep, you're back at it, you can really crank it out. But um, when you get older, it's a little more challenging to work around injuries and around just an aging body to figure out how to keep moving forward all the time. Um, it's possible, though. Plenty of good role models out there, plenty of people who, who've made it work. Talk to those people, ask those kinds of questions. That's part of what I mean. It's not just about talking about technique with people, 
But when you see someone who's 60 or 70 and they're still working out, they're still moving well, you got to go get them a cup of coffee. Say, hey, can I talk to you for a second? What do you do? I mean, how do you recover? How long do you work out a day? I mean, basic questions. What do you eat? Just to open that door of understanding for yourself, saying like, I know I'm going to be where you are 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now. And I want to get a head start now on what I could be doing to make sure I can still do what I love to do. Um, you're a lifer, clearly. So it's never too early to start implementing some strategies to make sure you'll still be here 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years from now, still doing what you love. Uh, it's, it's a necessity. So that's the most challenging thing, accepting your age and managing it to keep moving forward. Definitely. And I know you've taken martial arts for a long time. And as you mentioned, you've took on jiu-jitsu as well. But is there any martial art out there that you haven't tried over your life that you would like to actually give a go? And um, No, not really. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's so many. That's like, uh, you know, hey, I'd like to hear every song ever written. You know, I guess in theory, that'd be nice to hear every song ever written. But at some point you say, look, these are the albums. My head can only take so much music. That's good. I'm good. Hear a new song a couple once in a while. Okay. But there's no way I'm not. Uh, and again, because I think most arts kind of start converging, the deeper you go into an art, the more it starts becoming similar to other arts, like you've already alluded to. So I don't think I have to go learn every single Indonesian style to understand how to handle a knife. I don't think I have to go to every country and explore their grappling style to really understand a leg sweep or a hip toss. Ultimately, it's not that different. If it comes across my path, I can go, oh, cool, that's similar to this. And, oh, I like that grip. Great. But at this point of my life, there's no way with the amount of time we any of us have that you have time. Otherwise, you just become, a, a, what do we call it, like a dilettante. You're just running around going, oh, let me take a month of that. Oh, let me take two months of this. Oh, let me take a month of that. But you never really got anywhere. You're just kind of an encyclopedia of, oh, I saw this. I know about that. But at some point, like I said, you got to narrow your focus, work, go deep, learn principles, get to the place where you go, ah, I see. Then you can go to look at another art and it's easier, never easy to train, but it's easier because you can go, oh, I see. You guys rotate too. Oh, you guys drop, you guys breathe too. And let me use that. And then you can kind of appreciate the other art quicker, pick up some things and then move on maybe to another one. But I do always believe you should have one main training path the cross training is on the side i don't believe you should be oh i just do a little of this a little of that a little of this there i'm cross training that to me is not the idea of cross training cross training is i have a sport if you're a bas pro basketball player you need to practice basketball that's 80 percent of your day but maybe on the side off season or something i take the ballet i go play tennis a little bit and i learn a little different footwork and i learn a little different angle on something and then i can bring it back to my basketball but you got to have the basketball so i don't believe you know, I don't want to be a dilettante chasing every single art in the world just because that's not good enough. Working backwards, I wanted a certain set of skills to make myself feel good as a human being. And I've gotten my answers for that. I'm, I'm already involved in enough too much to answer those questions. Anything else outside of that at the moment would be just a distraction and take away from my training, my actual training. So convoluted maybe a little bit, but that's the answer. <laughs> Excellent. And finally, it's a question I asked everybody on these interviews, and I don't know if you've been following the Cobra Kai series. I, I did see them, yes. Yeah, But would you be more of a Miyagi-Do or a Cobra Kai? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I'm Miyagi-Do. I'm Team Miyagi. Uh, I mean, look, <laughs> we'll see where Miyagi-Do go, goes, because yeah. um, the dark side might come up a little bit pressure point stuff that they introduced in the series. Very interesting. <laughs> Hidden Miyagi techniques in there. They didn't show Daniel. What's that about? So maybe with a redefinition of Miyagi to begin with, then that'd be full Miyagi. Like there's the Miyagi, the life, the beauty parts of it. Great. But to deal sometimes with the life, you need that stuff that he didn't show Daniel. You need that secret scroll of the, uh, okay, but at the end of the day, here's how you kill this guy. Because life you should be exploring both extremes, how to save a life, how to take a life. You can do everything in between that you're a fully enlightened and complete martial artist. If you're only playing on half of that spectrum, that's, that works some of the time, but not all the time. And you're trying to be prepared for everything life can throw at you. So I'm going to say Miyagi, 
But yin yang, it's going to swing around. If you look at the underbelly of Miyagi, it looks a lot like Cobra Kai. And hopefully the other way around. Johnny becomes a better person and learns to respect other people more. So ultimately, I think it's just it's a swirl. There really is no one or the other. It's both. Yeah, definitely. And thank you for coming on again today, And It was a pleasure speaking with you. Always, Sensei. It's, it's a honor. delight. Yeah. I guess I'll see you next year. Next year. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll get you on again soon. But <laughs> Anytime. It's a pleasure, sir. Definitely. <laughs>